Hi everyone, this is Dave AC and this is my V blog 154 for Friday the 1st of July 2011 and uh, juice, what the juice holds and why. Yes, um, I'm recording this between two big uh, Wimbledon tennis semi-finals and uh, I've just watched the Tonga versus Djokovic first semi-final, I won't give out the result, and I'm just getting ready to go back and watch the second one, which is against uh, Andy Murray against uh, Nadal, so really looking forward to that, so that's one juice. The other juice, what the juice Holmes, refers to the Cultum Collective podcast, and uh, let me first say that um, there isn't any uh, Doctor Who Podshock new episode up. The most recent one is still episode 250 as I record this Viva. But of course the Cultum Collective have been busy as usual. Uh, last Sunday we did our episode 105, Immortality. And please, when you're listening to that, not every person or every topic discussed or every uh, novel uh, mentioned actually has an immortal being in it. Some of them are where immortality and longevity are part of the plot role. One or two others are people that are more uh, indestructible, maybe, than immortal. So please, uh, when you are listening to that, uh, take that into account. So that is uh, Cultum Collective Immortality up on the feeds, cultum.com, iTunes, our torture page 54821. And midweek uh, we did the final, the third episode of uh, Sherlock. Uh, yes, What the Juice Holmes. Um, that is now up on the feeds, went up on Wednesday of this week, and that was Sherlock the Great Game. And there was a slight game about it, because when I uploaded it to TorchU, uh, I got a message that the upload had failed. <clears throat> so I immediately restarted the upload, and of course the inevitable happened, we ended up with two copies going up on the feeds. Now I was able to delete the extra copy on our TorchU page, but of course by then uh, iTunes had read the RSS feed and iTunes may still be showing two copies of that. So if you, if you are on iTunes and see it, just click the newest of the two. That is the one that I've left up on the feeds. So apologies for that. It wasn't intentional. Hopefully it will self-correct when we put up our new episode on Sunday. And that new episode will be another of our ones in the From the Mind of series. Uh, we've done From the Mind of Terry Gilliam, and uh, we've done, uh, ooh, what's the other one? I can't remember at the moment. But the point is that this uh, Sunday we're doing From the Mind of Alfred Hitchcock. So please join us at 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Torchwide 54821 where we're talking about from the mind of Alfred Hitchcock uh, and whether he is a cult director or whether you consider him to be a mainstream director. Uh, not all of his works were of course uh, fantasy or sci-fi. Maybe the most one that fits that bill is The Birds, but a lot of it of course was psychological thrillers uh, and murder mysteries and there's some really great things hopefully we will be talking about on Sunday. So please uh, consider joining us for that. Um, well, there's lots of other bits of news, but almost too much news to tell you about from the www.whonews.net page. Lots of things coming out, of course, about uh, Torchwood. Um, the new series, Torchwood Miracle Day, The New World. Uh, apparently in the States they're going to have uh, advanced screening of the pre that premiere episode on the 5th and 6th of July. Of course the first episode airs on the 8th of July and here in the UK it should be on the 14th of July. So that is really exciting, the 10 episode series of Torchwood. And the other thing that's quite exciting is that there's going to be two versions now this is not going to be a version that's um, where one has been edited with a few minutes taken out. Apparently Russell T Davies said from the start it's been designed that there will be a slightly different version for the United States and a slightly different version for the UK. 
And I think one of the reasoning behind that is that Captain Jack is a well-known figure here in the UK and he has a lot of younger followers. So it may well be that some of the adult themes that Captain Jack is well known for in some parts of Torchwood may be just uh, cut down or uh, glossed over somewhat in the UK version because it's probably that, you know, young teens will be watching that here. I think it's going to go very firmly out in the States and Canada as an adult uh, series. OK, so that's that. So that's all the sci-fi news, really. Um, got a couple of pieces of uh, information that just things that interest me that may interest you. Uh, very excited and slightly sad that the final shuttle miss miss mission will be taking off on the 8th of July. This is the Atlantis shuttle and it will be the final shuttle mission. Uh, for the next couple of years, uh, it will be the Russians that will be taking up any astronauts or supplies to the space station. The uh, shuttle program is being retired. So fantastic thing it's been. Obviously we had the uh, the uh, shuttle, big shuttle disaster, but on the whole it's been a tremendous, tremendous success. So uh, that is both sad and exciting to celebrate that. Okay, uh, just on the internet and, and sort of tech news, let me just mention about um, Google. It's trying to launch a uh, rival to Facebook and it's called Google Plus. Now they didn't do so well with Google Wave a while back. But apparently the people signing up are trying to sign up for Google Plus has been so great that they've actually uh, stopped temporarily new people to sign up for it. So if you go to any of the Google search engine pages, you'll probably see it listed as Google Plus there. And they're trying to give it a, a new spin on social networking. OK, um, let me just have a, a little check. Uh, there's one or two other things that I was going to mention, but I'm going to leave them because I've got a lovely wine. Well, I hope it's a lovely wine to end on. Did I say wine at the end, at the beginning? Didn't? Sorry about that. But before that, I have been promising a couple of weeks now to talk about Doctor Who, Planet of the Spiders. Well, um, we're almost there. I'm not going to keep you in too much suspense, but I'm not actually going to play a clip from Planet of the Spiders because I've only just got back into it. Of course, I know the story. I've seen it on videotape uh, half a dozen times. Um, but what I'm going to do is because I've only got it here a little while, I'm going to go. This is the, the notes of all the things that uh, are on it. But I'm going to one of the extras. And this is um, uh, Directing Who with Barry Letts. So we're going to move the camera around, hope everything works and uh, just play a little bit of this. Now Barry Letts is talking rather quietly so I'm hoping you're going to hear this. So let's click the play button, let's hope it plays. Go on. I always felt that um, opening the stories out by going on location, getting outside, getting out of the studio uh, was a great help. Because colour had uh, just started, people were starting to get colour licences. Sorry the volume's a bit low. Was, um, a surplus of money at the BBC. There was more money coming in at, uh, at that period than uh, uh, the BBC was spending. And uh, so I was able to have uh, really quite a lot of filming. You know, we had uh, about five minutes filming in every episode. On the location of Terror of the Autons, it looked as if the whole thing was going to collapse on us because Katie was uh, very, very short-sighted. She had to run across a bulky bit of rough ground in a quarry and she twisted her ankle very badly and was limping very badly. We actually put some lines into coverage, but uh, I think by the time uh, we edited it together, the, the left didn't show, so we didn't, didn't use the line. What I tried to do... Uh, and I'm going to stop it soon. Uh, it's lovely to hear 
the background to some of these events. Let me stop it there. OK, so that's a little bit of one of the extras on the DVD, Planet of the Spiders. And that is, of course, the great uh, Barry Letts talking about directing on new. There's obviously lots of other things. Uh, new, now and then, trip back to some of the locations, photo galleries, um, uh, omnibus edition, uh, omnibus trailer, uh, production subtitles, uh, Radio Time stuff, all, all lots. And by the way, I should say, it's actually a two disc set. So that is great. Planet Spiders, of course, it won't be any surprise to long term who watches that that is uh, John Pertwee, the third Doctor's final story. And of course, it is followed by Tom Baker's first story, Robot. So with that, let's go to the wine. And um, here it is. And it's Finboss Shiraz Reserve from South Africa. I'm going to turn this round and I'm going to try and get that into focus. Freeze frame. 13.5%. And um, it's actually a wine from a different supermarket that I don't often go to called uh, the Co-op, which um, if you remember when I bought uh, and talked about the uh, free sat, uh, not free sat, the free view HD box that I got, I, I got that with some um, uh, Tesco vouchers that I'd use. Well, I also get some uh, Co-op vouchers, so I'd use them. So basically this wine was free. It is actually in fact about £5.50. So that's a $7 wine. Cost me nothing for once, that's great. And um, let's have a taste. It's poured out, it's a lovely dark red colour, as it's described on there, uh, a garnet red. And we're getting quite a lot of uh, fruits coming from it. It's just warming up nicely now. Mm. And it's got that, again, uh, we're back to that sort of uh, farmyard. It's not farmyard muck, but it's more the sort of dusty tracks of the uh, a dry summer. Mm. And there's an intense. Now that's more damsony plum than uh, although there's blackcurrant in there. And there's a little bit of vanilla. Oh, let's have another taste. That is, to say it's a modestly priced wine is uh, pretty good. Let me use my little glass and just check what it says there. Uh, Garnet in colour displays intense aromas of dried fruit and hints of vanilla on the nose. Chunky palate is packed full of ripe dark fruit with hints of prunes, figs, chocolate and mocha. Well, I've certainly got the prunes. Um, uh, full and smooth with good tannins. Uh, good for drinking well, ideally with richly flavoured meats such as lamb, venison and wild boar. Well, actually, I'm quite pleased with that. Um, I don't often buy it, as I say, wines from the co-op. Um, so that gets the thumbs up. At um, It's actually occasionally been on offer, I think, for even the 3 this wine. So it is a bargain wine, but it tastes rather nice. I'll enjoy that. And just one more thing, perhaps I should have mentioned it before the way. Uh, yesterday I went with my friend Jack on to uh, one of my Naked Wines tasting tour. They've been going around the country. Uh, this was the one that they held at Manchester. I think they've gone up to uh, Scotland um, for the last one or two. And is it? I'm not sure where they're going up to. I think it will have probably finished while you see this. But they were, um, oh, there it says at the bottom, doesn't it? Um, today they're in Leeds and tomorrow they will be in Edinburgh. Uh, but it's been great. They had about 100 wines for us to taste. Uh, there were uh, the different wine makers there from Naked Wines. Um, and we were trying wines up to about um, £18 in price. 
wines from Spain and Portugal there, Germany, Austria, Slovenia, uh, New Zealand wines. Difficult to get New Zealand wines here in the UK, so that's always a bonus. I wouldn't say difficult, not difficult, but they always seem to be overly priced. Uh, from Chile, uh, Argentina, South Africa. Some of my favourite wines were there. Uh, Jock Harvey's um, at Brewery Hill was there. The Arabella wines were there. And, and they even had uh, Fizz dessert wines and port there. I took my friend Jack. Uh, I think he tasted about 40 of the wines, but we were only there for about an hour and a half. So I didn't quite go that berserk. So yes, if you are a Naked Wines member and they do another of these tours, have a go at it. Uh, it was really good. Met a few of the other uh, Naked Wines people there. And um, I really enjoyed it. Um, some lovely cheese for us to, to have with it. And um, all in all, for £10, um, which you got back if you ordered on the day, it was a really good little event. So that's an online wine purchasing group here in the UK. OK, at 16 minutes, I think I ought to stop there because I want to get back to the Andy Murray and the Nadal semi-final. Catch you next week, everybody. Bye.